So um, we'll start it off with a roll call. Gradle and Senior Services, Leo. Present. UMass Extension, Present. Flint Community Health Center, Present. Creative Collective, Present. Salvation Army, Present. YMCA, yeah. My Brother's Table. Present. All right. And so, um, Flint V, well, we have some old business that um, there hasn't really been any updates on the old business because I've been away for, <laughs> for so long. Um, I think there should be some updates <clears throat> probably probably by the next meeting and that's well overdue i know that um actually we should have a quick um so mission to discuss old business do i have a second uh, right roll call griddle and senior services yeah. leo yes. umass extension yes. Lynn community health center yeah. creative collective yes. salvation army yes. YMCA, yeah. my brother's table. All right, old business open. Um, so I was saying the SOP on spending is still being worked on, but we still have a means to spend through the Division of Public Health. Um, still working on the invitation to um, the representative from Citizens Inn and being thoughtful about you know whether that's an event or where the time where that we're all here and we can have a thoughtful discussion and also to invite a representative from Salem Food Pantry, but that's what I wanted to discuss, um, is that Robin Burns did meet with the mayor, and I know they discussed, um, I still need to follow up with what happened. This was when I was out, but I think there it has something to do with mobile pantries or something of the sort. So um, some updates there and as i get some more information i will send that out in email but that just serves as a reminder that we shouldn't keep old business old for um too long and we should be moving so all right on to new business um do i make a motion to open up new business do i have a second second all right so move roll call greater and senior services leo yep. um new Lynn coalition <laughs> welcome um, where this is a motion to open up new business. He came in at just the, the perfect time. So um, I'll take that as a yes, UMass Extension, yes. Lynn Community Health Center, yes. Creative Collective, yes. Salvation yes. Army, YMCA, yes. and my table. All right, new business first order of stuff is approving the August minutes. Um, I think that was the last time we met. Um, did y'all have time to review that? Yeah. All right. Um, so I make a motion to accept, uh, I mean, to approve the August minute so we can submit that to the clerk's office. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Roll call. Great Lynn Senior Services. Leo. Yes. Um, New Lynn Coalition. Yes. UMass Extension. Yes. Lynn Community Health Center. Yes. Creative Collective. Yes. Salvation Army. Yes. YMCA. My Brother's Table. Yes. All right. Next order of business is the... USDA Community Food Projects Competitive Grant Program. Um, actually, Nick, do you wanna? Yeah, so briefly, uh, the deadline was last Thursday, so the list did submit. Um, we won't hear back until May, though, so it's kind of just kind of the open. I didn't get too many details on other agencies that joined up with list, but from what I know, we Maybe we submitted it before the deadline, and that was what they were really trying to do. So we'll hear back around May. That's what we were saying. All right. So, um, and I did. We 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 as a food policy council signed on, um, and I did send some stuff about it, and just breaking it down without um, going into super deep conversation. And I welcome the super deep conversation if y'all want to set up a time to talk about it but it would um, provide funding for programming that's happening here and within the Food Policy Council. And we always welcome funding for new programs and more so it would be to just an uh, extension of the partnerships and collaboration that's happening here anyways and getting funding for it. So we can definitely set up some time to talk about that. All right, still uh, any questions or all right. And still under new business here. Um, we're welcoming uh, Lynn Krasker Schultz from Spur. Um, if you want to come up and say some words, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lynn Krasker Schultz. I'm the 
everyone. Thank you for having us and welcoming us. Um, I'm Lynn Kraska. I'm the executive director of SPUR. We are an Essex County and North Shore nonprofit that helps connect people living on the North Shore with volunteer opportunities. Um, we really focus on the volunteer and their experience. And so we work with lots and lots of nonprofits, many of whom are around the table. We work with the Creative Collector. We worked with my brother's table. We work with the YMCA all the time um, to really help motivate people and inspire them to give back to their community in tangible ways. Everything we do is meeting a need in the community. The example I use is um, when I first started working at Spur, we had someone call and say, can you set up a field trip for our group of freshmen to go and wash the fire trucks? And we said, that is a great thing and you should absolutely do that. But that does not meet our mission because the firemen get paid to wash the fire trucks as part of their job, right? So that's actually not meeting a community need. We do a lot regarding food insecurity. Um, and so we really, our goal is to help other nonprofits to help accomplish their mission by providing them a volunteer corps. And so all of our opportunities are episodic, meaning they are one time, you know, no long-term commitment. It's very different if I say, will you volunteer this Friday, nine to 10, versus will you volunteer the next four Fridays, nine to 10, right? It's a different mindset, it's a different mentality. And um, most of the people who volunteer with us end up volunteering regularly, but there's no guilt if they go away or they get sick, or they decide to take their grandkids, whatever it is, right? There's a million reasons why people can't, um, but there's no guilt in that. And all of our opportunities are less than two hours. So for example, when we're at the Salem Pantry, it's a four hour shift. We break that into two two hour shifts. Some people double up, some people don't, and that's totally okay. And so our goal is to engage as many people as possible. Um, we see ourselves as um, an organization that helps collaborate and contribute to what other organizations are doing. So we'd love to work with you guys a lot. I would say 70 or 80% of what we do is within the realm of food insecurity. Um, and you know, everything from making food at home and delivering it to places like LifeBridge or My Brother's Table or the Recuperative Care Center or River House to making snack bags for Beverly Bootstraps to we just did, a, we actually did a lasagna making event at Phoenix and we donated to Catholic Charities 100 lasagna. 84 lasagnas that time. We didn't quite make it to 100. Um, but we had 35 volunteers making those. And so it's it's in the spirit of helping people to give back in meaningful ways. So that's what we're about. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, Lynn, thanks for the breakdown. And, and I know that um, something that comes up uh, quite often um, is, is the need for volunteers. and. Um, yeah. especially organizations outside of the Food Policy Council as well. So um, that's very welcome news to hear. Um, what would be the best way to go about contacting you and your organization? So I can, I can give that to people. Um, Norris has my information. I think a lot of you have our information, but our website is also spurnorthshore.org. Spur does not stand for anything. It stands for to engage. People ask us what the acronym is all the time. It's not an acronym. Uh, but spurnorthshore.org and all of our emails are listed there as well. All right. Thank you. And yep, you guys can reach out to me, and I'm sure you guys uh, are familiar with uh, Lynn. So thanks again. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Um, food delivery proposals. Um, so, uh, topic D. Uh, more or less, uh, we are getting some data. I know you guys have heard me mention um, the CHI survey that the health division has been doing. I mean, that along with our community food assessment, which we'll talk about afterwards, along with um, the community health uh, improvement plan we're doing points to uh, transportation as the main issue, but I'm sure like uh, we, we all knew that. Um, and so, that's just brainstorming. This topic is asking you all to put that on your radars and to maybe brainstorm some new ideas around that. Um, I mean, even to that point when, you know, I was away, um, Robin had met with the mayor about being more mobile with food. So I, I think that's definitely an issue that will be coming up. Um, I know that the health division is looking at some solutions for transportations and transportation and what can be done and just making things more mobile. So thinking caps on and looking forward to checking back with y'all. And I think funding from the community um, food projects grant could cover some of that um, if we get it. And of course, you know the nature of grants, but 
that would be very welcomed. All right, and <clears throat> moving on, topic E for our community food assessment. And so, all right, I know that it was supposed to have been finished uh, about a month ago, and it was finished around then, but then they got feedback <laughs> from all of us. And so they figured rather than like rushing through and, um, you know, like jamming through that, that plan, I mean, that assessment without Rather than jamming it through, they took our feedback into consideration, which I appreciate. And so um, from what they're telling me, it's completed. Um, I think I have to um, send them a forward to it and then we'll be good to go. Um, I wish that was actually completed in time for, um, sorry, be here, but going forward, we know that it's going to help with lots of the funds that we apply for and even like shaping the strategies that we use to to fight food insecurity and just basic planning. I'm sure that the, the council and the mayor would appreciate that as well. And uh, um, and again, like we can all use that at our organizations to apply for funds and, you know, just to sharpen the tools in our toolbox for food insecurity. So that is, so stay tuned for that. And that should be done uh, before the year. I mean, it is done, but with all the bells and whistles all right, moving on to the next topic, uh, new schools and developments in the city. Um, long story short, lots of new things are being built in the city. And by our um, the bylaws, I believe we're supposed to be offering some input or expertise in the matter. So don't be surprised if I'm reaching out to some of y'all about like thoughts, we uh, thoughts in or concerns or what have you about some of the new things being built. Um, and to that, as I'm talking, like I am also within our bylaws is we are supposed to be drafting a report for the council, if I'm not mistaken. And also, you know, that's perfect timing with our community food assessment that we can pretty much use for that report. So, um, two things. So lots of new things are happening and we do have like a, a charge to make sure that, you know, that's being looked at through a, a food security lens and also that report so lots of putting things on radars and so that brings us to um either brings us to the last um sort of new business here which is um food policy council branded merchandise and that is if you guys want something let me know so we can uh get that going um i get about 30 totes left <laughs> totes a lot, um but i didn't know there was merch i didn't either I mean, we, we have our, our official crest now and everything yeah, so okay. but, you know thank so are we you getting sweaters or we can purchase sweater but, so how does it go we have the <laughs> all over uh, yeah. like the, the official logo for us and then our agency logo next and year, you or? can have it so um Simons has our Food Policy Council crest digitized. So oh, nice. pretty much you give them any ob like clothing object and it, you know they, they can get that on there. But for agency um, emblazoning, I'm not, you'd have to have had your agency's logo digitized, okay. right, Tia? I don't think the hybrid solution. So, but you it was could, probably through Simons though, so you probably, you, but you can also just order a patch. Right. You could just go to sign, and I, and I have some patches. If you guys want patches, I can just get those out. I think I have one somewhere. And yeah, actually, that's a, thanks for reminding me. That's a really like, quick and <laughs> I was putting easy. it on my badge when I was yeah. doing all the community engagement stuff, but, so um, I looked official. <laughs> but if you were to say you wanted a jacket or a bag or what have you, you could just like order it straight from Simon's. But yeah, and it would have the Food Policy Council logo on it. And then also, I'm looking for some funding so that can you know we can get some of that for. Um, and, and when I say get that for us, that's to uh, differentiate pretty much to let folks know that we exist because that's a criticism is that folks don't know that or what we're doing in the work, uh, the important work that we have done, plan to do. And so we really do need to stand out in some ways. Um, 
that that's been feedback from a few few different places and so i do think that's important and i think we have a really cool looking logo so should definitely um take advantage of that all right so um oh, we are flying so um other business um i make a motion to and, and so there are no questions concerns about any of the discussions on the new business we are free to all right so making a motion to open up other business do i have a second all right roll call great and senior services yeah. leo yeah. Um, New Lynn Coalition, yes. UMass Extension, yes. um, Lynn Community Health Center, yep. Creative Collective, yes. Salvation Army, yes. YMCA, New American Center, yes. and My Brother's Table. All right, other business opened. Um, just this is another putting it on your radar. Um, so there are some of the food policy and food security funds that uh, Massachusetts traditionally, you know, spends on its municipalities and different programs across the state. Some of that is tied up, or not tied up, but it, you know, we get it from the federal level. Um, as uh, the new administration, um, you know, comes into power, we want to watch and make sure that none of the funding that we use for things are impacted. So I know that there are some, yeah, there, there are some programs that uh, that that might be on the chopping block. That's not to say that it is going to happen, but just um, you know, uh, being alert for that. Um, any questions? <laughs> All right. Still under other business is. Um, <laughs> We, if uh, for, and this is not to say that we can't like have me, uh, you know, we can't like call out, but if we're not going to be at the meetings, just give me a day's notice so that like, there's a whole process with the clerk's office that has to happen. And so, yeah, just give me a heads up. Like life happens. If we can't make it, we can't make it. It's solely so that like, you know, clerk's office is in the loop and we're doing our thing and, you know, we're not looking like we don't take our work serious because lots of eyes are on us. So, um, any questions about? Uh, oh, I, I want to go back to the, the a federal funding source. Yep. First of all, the state. <clears throat> um, uh, there was a, an action today at the state house asking for the um, additional passage of a supplemental um, budget for um, HIP um, to increase it so that we could retain the 40, 60, 80. But if that doesn't happen, uh, it will be $20 for uh, each uh, household until June 30th. And that, that was a tough decision. They decided that that would be better than shutting the whole program down. And that was a decision between um, Department of Transition Assistance and the Department of Agriculture. And that was a state decision. And the governor had asked it originally for more money that would have funded it through the whole year. Mm. So also to the amount which was proposed for the FY26 budget, this is our state budget because it's a state program, uh, is something to watch. Yep. And then on the federal level, as all of you know, the farm bill has not, has not passed. And um, people's eyes are on, on that as, as, as well. And that's where um, SNAP has yep. its authorization and its funding. Quite right. Um, so there's a lot of um, uncertainty at this point in time. And I know with you know a number of other federally funded programs. Thank you for being super direct, Jeannie. Yeah, there's lots of uncertainty. Um, lots and lots at state side federal um and uh one thing though that we do have a history of doing here is like we we have gotten private funded grants you know our organizations have pooled the resources together to do you you know to do our thing 
you know, um, MGB, we, we love MGB. And also we were going to have a Phoenix with or, or without that. And I know that during hard times, we'll do the same sort of stuff. Um, we have to, um, for Lynn, for the residents, for our organizations. Um, but yeah, there's no going around it. There's lots of uncertainty. And also uncertainty only lasts for a, a period, you know, um, it, we just, uh, we do, we have to be super vigilant in the coming months and years. So on that topic, uh, I mean, obviously all of this is kind of anticipatory, but what is the outline role of the policy council in terms of advocacy or messaging around some Obviously, I'm thinking on the advocacy front, but then I'm also thinking on the client facing front with food insecurity and certainly the potential for their chilling effect within the community for accessing any type of um, social service and assistance. Um, and that would, I think that would kind of be a separate issue from that. So um, I will. That's a great point, it's all great points. I'm gonna triple check this with the clerk's office, but I believe any statement that we take a vote on and pass them, like that's our official stance. So um, if, for example, if we as a council vote to write a letter to the, uh, you know, the ag committee, you know, outlining the importance of HIP and we took a vote on that as a council and we're like, this is important to Lynn and our residents. Uh, we could do that. And that does count as advocacy. Um, you know what I'm saying? And also we as a council, I don't, we couldn't pick a candidate. Um, we couldn't d delve into it like that, but we can, we, we focus more on the issues than the. So it's sort of the the classic advocacy versus lobbying. Precisely, precisely. Great question, great points. Has there been any discussion as to how we're gonna go about addressing the gaps? If there's, there are any, like on the city bar, and how, what is the expectation? Um, so, Pertaining to food, I know that conversations are happening. Um, and te technically, as the Food Policy Council, the, we're at the forefront of that. Um, you know, the, the new administration, then even, they're not, they haven't taken over yet. And also, uh, I, it, how do I put this? I think it's on a lot of folks' radars. And also, I think there's lots of anticipation happening. And even if you listen to the governor, um, you know, there's lots of anticipation and waiting and watching happening. Um, and I think there has been, well, I mean, I can't speak for others, but I think there's lots of anticipation and wait and see happening. I mean, I'm, I think we're all run a food pantry here. So we're seeing all the, I don't know if people are just stocking up on stuff, but we see an increase of folks that we normally don't see. So that's the reason why I ask to see how we can kind of speak to the folks one on one. Like you don't have to go through this. Like even if it's a bumpy ride, it's you know we're gonna manage the best we can and as nonprofits to provide essentials. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like calming the folks down because I feel like there's a lot of food ordering happening. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you said a lot of food ordering, meaning they'll go to every pantry because they just, don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of months. So, right. Um, so the thing, all right, there's anticipation happening and there's nothing, you know, there's no guarantee things are going to be horrible. You know, it's just lots of waiting and, and seeing. Also, you know, uh, Lynn and us, and I'd say the whole operation, we're pretty resilient. Um, and even in some hard times, we've still, you know, mutually, Lynn, we've still made things work. Um, 
it might not be the most ideal and 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 smooth <laughs> um of smoothest of operations but we'll get it done and we'll make it work um and i say that because to underscore and i know that like i say this every chance i get to lend residents is that we you know, as a food policy council will always have their back you know whether you know um regardless of you know, ethnicity of documentation status at the end of the day they're they're humans they're Lynn residents and you know we'll we'll always be there that's to say with all of the funding that we've been getting um or even if that's reduced and as of now there's nothing to we're not sure that things are going to be so dire or that funding is going to be reduced by any uh, great margin. So we just keep on going. Um, and also, I know that Massachusetts is uh, we're a pretty unique state in that there are lots of private uh, public private partnerships. And so funding will still be out there, uh, even if things aren't going the way we want. But I, I don't think that we should. We should be aware, but we shouldn't. Uh, despair if that makes sense i mean easier easier to to say that but like i'm i'm very confident that we'll be all right maybe there'll be some bumps but we'll, we'll be all right you need to put that on a sticker we should be aware <laughs> but do not despair <laughs> that'll be our new slogan then yes hey two things we've noticed since september our, our numbers have been steadily increasing it was yeah. before the election like we've just been watching it let's get higher and higher and higher so I don't know if it's election related. I don't think so because it started but kind of right around when school started. So I think there definitely is an increase of, in the need. Um, We've seen, sorry, uh, inflation has just been driving yeah. that for the past couple of months, even before. All right. And the other thing so. I'd like to say is um, it doesn't, it does matter who the administration is in the federal government. And I think primarily for like soup kitchens and food pantries, like the USDA foods is a perfect example of how that can really impact our programs. You know, right now we can get like chicken and, and certain items. I know last go around, four days ago, we would get this really weird products from like the Coke industry, like chicken, like you couldn't even cook it. It was like these prefab chicken pieces instead of like actual chicken. And like hazelnuts and all these like weird foods that nobody wanted. And I've seen that before, like during other administrations as well. USDA isn't just about who's hungry and what kind of foods they need. USDA is about also helping particular agricultural industries. So it's not really like, oh, people need chicken. It's really like, oh, the hazelnut growers are having a hard time getting enough money for hazelnuts. So let's give that to the poor people. Right. So I just think we have to really be aware that that the types of foods that we can get might radically change. And, and I think it's something we really should be thinking and planning for because um, it really will impact our programs. Um, and even things like just like foods that are appropriate for different ethnic um, like those people are familiar with and like to eat, those may not be available through USDA anymore. So I just, I'm not trying to be like a downer, but but I, I think we have to like be realistic about, we may still get USDA foods, but it might not be what we are getting right now. Quite right. Um... Hence, uh, you know, leaning on the, the and that's, there's not knocking anything you said. And, um, you, you know, uh, it does come down to the administration and their beliefs. And also Massachusetts is pretty, it's uniquely set. There are lots of, I wouldn't say, there are some private and public partnerships, for example, maybe, and here's where, you know, state policy and advocacy comes along. Maybe, you know, there are some local farms. Maybe, we, you know, we can source, you know, and again, I need some more time, but 
there are some options to minimize, not eliminate. Um, you know what could, what's what's coming, what's potentially going to happen. Um, also, it again, I feel like this this goes. Uh, this kind of transcends us to the state legislature and the, and the federal at the federal level because you know they are going to have to. I think they're also going to have to be aware of what's coming and being really strategic with what they're funding and you know, the the sort of collaborations that they're doing. Um, I don't want to say that like I know there's going to be shortages of things for sure, and also that's definitely a possibility, and I hope and i'm pretty sure that legislators are, are talking about that now but yeah yeah you're absolutely right i think it's our goal to to, to like make sure we're talking about it i would love to see this group meet with our delegations and have a conversation with them about both our federal folks but also our state people okay i, I think by the time it happens it will be too late like it's too hard to go like those USDA food is like in motion years before you actually get the product. So I think the time is now to have those conversations with them. So yeah, I think for us, I don't know about you guys, but like I think as far as like protein products, I wanna say it's probably about seventy percent comes from the USDA and then maybe thirty percent comes from the state. The rest is it's all federal it's mostly federal. So I don't know. I just don't to have those conversations like now. Not. So, so to that, would the motion be that we, as a food policy council, invite the state delegation, I'm or that we invite a state delegation to a meeting where we can talk about food policy statewide in response to any federal changes, and that we also invite federal legislators to come to either the same meeting or. I second that motion. All right. <laughs> so, roll call. Grayland Senior Services. Leo. Yep. New Lynn Coalition. Yes. Mass Extension. Yes. Lynn yes. Community Health Center. 100%, yes. Catholic Charities. Yes. Creative yes. Collective. Salvation Army. Yes. YMCA. New American Center. My Brother's Table. <laughs> Chair, yes. Um, all right, that motion passes. So we will invite state delegation and federal to talk about food policy it's across the state. And M's not here, so I want to jot this down to make sure. Oh. OK, um, I will begin drafting that letter, and I'll send it out in an email, and we'll We'll do the edit. <laughs> we'll do the edits, and we'll get that going. Um, and I, I think that uh, again, that would be to their benefit, so they would know what's coming down the pipeline and what's. And or if there's a federal that can sort of have a guidance as to what could potentially change, that is also uh, an eye opener to us, so that way we know how to best serve our people when that change does kick in. Yeah, all right. I agreed. Agreed. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll follow up. I, I know that um, every time I've spoken with members of our, our delegation, um, you know, Senator Crichton, Rep. Armini, um, former Rep. Capano, but now Rep. Uh, Reed, who has been super, you know, passionate and cheerleading our work, I, I think um, they'd be looking forward to, to these conversations. Um, and food policy is, uh, I think the pandemic has shown everybody, federal level, state level, at the municipal level, how important uh, food is, and not just in the sense of being hungry, but like how it affects health and the economy, the local economy with restaurants closing. So I think uh, I think uh, that this is the time, the timing is good. Um, and great point, thanks for bringing that up. And all right. Okay, are you including the federal level as well? I mean, okay, that on the was federal level, it, the yeah. key contact there is Jim McGovern. Jim McGovern, um, he represents Western Mass, though. Right, but he, he is, is the, the champion. He is the champion, yeah. Um, 
and, and he's got to get his car far east. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. I thank you for coming. But um, yeah. Um, so yes, pretty much. I was planning on sending like a, or the plan was to send uh, pretty much a letter to everyone. <laughs> our local delegation and all of the reps and senators for Massachusetts. I don't think everyone's going to accept, but if we get like, you know, most of them or, you know, like 60% of them, 70%, I think that's a win. That's very true. That's very true. Would, would it be easier to make it a Zoom or a Teams call if they can't be here? So at least we at least get to yeah it, so it, it would make it easy and also it, you know that's part of their you, you know they serve the people and i think they should come and see what's happening in lynn and phoenix and you know see the faces of the folks and the organizations that are going to be impacted i know if i was elected i would want to but yeah zoom exists and if you guys want it to you know be via zoom we can we can i like that person so that way we can get the live reaction rather than the Facial. Let me just put my face on. Kind of thing. <laughs> Here, yeah. Um. Alrighty. Any other comments, concerns? I think we, 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 I feel like we need to manage our expectations because I mean everybody uh, waits and watches. So we can't like nobody knows it for them. But I think raising this issue. I kind of know why this makes them think about it. We are waiting to watch. But in terms of responses, I don't think until things happen, nobody knows whether they're going to happen. Even the most experienced ones, they're not going to uh, share because you know, yeah, everything is in the air. Everything is in the air. Involved. But, but still, it feels like very beneficial to invite and to show them that we exist and reflect. Yep. Is it community dependence? Yep. Quite right. And um, I, I think it's also, um, yeah, no one knows what's going to happen, but let's just say that if they're in a meeting where that thing that we're telling them to be careful about is going to happen, they'll know from being briefed by us ahead of time. Hey, maybe, you, you know, um, but you, again, <laughs> you're right too in that, like I, that's why I couldn't even really answer in manual straight earlier when I was like, well, I know that they're talking, like I think everyone is just kind of, okay, this just happened and let me let me be aware and keep my eye on it, but we, we don't know and, what's and things will be happening gradually for years and then they will pass but it's a long time so yeah. how are they going to start we don't know but we'll build the next <laughs> we don't know we will yeah, yeah. a way for us to tell them about yeah uh, yeah i, I just that's expect them to tell us anything yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the big point that's all right. maybe by the time this happens they will know <laughs> Uh, um quite right i yeah i how do i put i i'm not gonna things will be all right uh, we we there we don't know what's coming but we we've uh, we're a pretty resilient little city here um uh, things will be all right um all right <laughs> Um, and uh, no worries. We are a super resilient city. And despite anything, we will continue keeping in mind that even during the pandemic, we were chugging along and doing all of our work dur like during that when other municipalities and other states weren't doing the work that we were doing. So like I, I have, I'm super confident in all of y'all. So, and and the people of Lynn and the mayor and our state and uh, we'll weather it together. And also they need to know what to look out for. And <laughs> see the, uh, these meetings that we're gonna have with them. 
great points. Anything else, anyone? All right. And with that, move to adjourn. Um, can I have a second, please? All right, roll call, Gridland Senior Services, Leo, New Lynn Coalition, UMass Extension, yes. Yes. Community Health Center, yes. Catholic Charities. Do you have the next Wednesday? Um, the next, um, I'd have to check the calendar, but it's um, for the second Wednesday of every month. Okay. Yes. Thank you, um, <laughs> Alicia and Army. Yes. YMCA, New American Center, My Brother's Table Chair, yes. And meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Lynn, thanks again for joining, joining us. And I hope you all have a great night.